Andy Hare here. I'm coming to you all the way from down under. In fact, we are here today in Geelong, Victoria. Uh, this is my hometown. This is where I teach. This is where I, I've grown up. Uh, across my number number of years, I'm sitting here right uh, at the Geelong Football Club training ground. So the Geelong Football Club is in the Australian Football League, my favourite team, don't worry about anything else. Um, I've been teaching a long time um, and it brings me great delight and an absolute pleasure to be invited back to the Phys Ed Summit. Um, this is, I believe, this is my fifth time. Um, and I, I reckon that it's my fourth time with Sarah Gitchy Hartman, who is uh, by far the ultimate host and moderator who will be sitting here today because while you're listening to this, I'm actually sound asleep. Um, it is past midnight my time. Um, doesn't really look it, but this is not what midnight looks like down here in Australia. Today I'm talking to you about the E-Challenge and it's something special and something really meaningful to me because um, I, I developed it out of a problem and we're going to go through the presentation. What you're going to see in this presentation is really uh, before I get into the e-challenge is a synopsis of the problems and solutions I came across. I'm going to talk to you about what is the e-challenge and, and what impact it's had on the, the thousands of kids that we've been able to connect with straight away over the last six months. Um, but also into a live demo and we've got some superstars that have played an event for me last weekend um, that are going to be showing you how simple this is to be involved in and how you can use this same platform in your own schools. So. Let's delve in, what is the e-challenge? Um, the e-challenge the e came out of a scenario and a, a few different itches that I had over um, technology um, in the past four or five years. And, and what I really wanted to do is for a sports event. Um, here in Australia, all our sports events are held within school time. So mums and dads often are working. Um, 15, 16 years ago when I was working as a region coordinator, we had quite a, a huge amount of people coming to our uh, region events and our region events were our qualifiers for state championships. They were well supported by parents, um, they were well supported by families, they were well supported by schools. But over the, uh, the past 10 years with the cost of living going up, um, the problem was that we had the, the spectatorship of these events with mums and dads especially dropping right off and, and kids were coming to these events and going um, home without that parental interaction and, and quite often um, having to recount scores. The other problem we faced was that nothing was live. Nothing was computerised, there was no technology behind anything. We had a whiteboard, uh, we had a whiteboard marker and we would write down all the scores. Um, so unless you actually looked at the, the scoreboard um, and saw all the scores and did your maths yourself, you had no idea where you were placed in during the day. Um, and that really annoyed me because I, I found that what I wanted was to have uh, an event where kids could really achieve what they did on the field, but also mathematically calculate where they were um, off the field and see straight away what they needed to do. Because let's face it, every team that came to our event wanted to win the event. And that's no different to anything else. If they qualified for the event, they were there to win the event. Um, and what took place was that these live scoreboards um, through the same concept I used for eChallenge became so interactive that people were able to read and see the scores not only right around the field, in their own cars or on their own phones or on their own devices, but mums and dads were able to interact again that potentially were working in their workplace hundreds of kilometres away. See, some of my children would actually travel 500 kilometres, so five hours, in a car to play in a day's event. So we wanted that interaction so parents could see what was happening where their kids were at that time. So lo and behold, with the, the use of Excels and algorithms and a few um, helps from mates with, uh, with higher knowledge, I was able to develop the concept of the e-challenge. <clears throat> so we were only ever catering for the elite kids, the ones that, that played in this team. So I've got a school um, Leopold Primary School, which is up over this way. 
So at my school, I have 200 available children, say, to play in a game of AFL football. Um, but only 20 can be picked. So of those 200, I might have 50 that are suitable and 50 that are desirable, but then I have to cut 30 out and 20 can only play. Now that 20 were then fostered through a sports growth. But what happened to those other 30 that could play? That was my first problem. So the, the the amalgamation of the live scoring sheets, which I refer to now as eChallenge, and then that base layer of sport, okay? What is it that we needed to do to be able to play sport? Well, we needed to know how to use our skills. So what could we do with our skills to bring in those children that were in the sub-layer of that, that sports program to keep them interactive and to keep them thinking that, yeah, I've got the skills to go further. Because let's face it, our physical literacy ideal is we want to keep kids involved in sport for the remainder of their life, uh, not just the time that we have care for them. So we, didn't, we need to develop a challenge that they knew that they were really good at, but then they could work towards to get better and better and better. Enter the E Challenge. So the e-challenge itself was first launched last year in November as a trial. I had a weekend where I put things together and I developed a concept that then I took it out and I went to as many teachers around the world as I possibly could try. My, my workplace, my work office is the globe and you guys know that because you know, the amount of work that I put out but also receive back shows that what we're doing is growing together. Um, so the e-challenge itself was there to be able to foster the growth of not only schools uh, but also you know, mate, but also those people around us um, that wanted to be involved as, at the same time and that was our critical element is the the engagement of others so our first trial um, what we had was we had ended up with 32 teachers around the world and all they needed to do was draw a card. So that first card they drew, that was their first score. So if I drew an eight and Dan Tennessee drew a three and I was playing Dan in that round, I would beat Dan eight to three. Just like a soccer score um, or a netball score or any score that you wanted to. Um, in round two, I might have, might have been playing Aaron Gardner. He scored a king, which gave him 10 points. I scored a, a two, which gave me two points. So on a ladder, I would have one win, one loss. And I'm gonna show you how all this worked with the algorithms um, a little bit later on in this show. But that first trial engaged 32 teachers and it made me absolutely go crazy with what this could actually do. So trial two was in December. And in December, what we did, we engaged again 32 schools and we put up a challenge based that they needed to, each teacher needed to go and get 10 children. So I looked at it and gone, if I've got 32 schools and I've got 10 children in from each school playing, we've got 320 kids around the world playing sport together, okay, on a challenge base. So they're taking what they've learned in physical education and they're applying it into a competitive element that, that had a reduced element of anxiety and stress because they weren't um, in a large room being compared to other people they don't know. They're in their comfort zone with their friends and, and I guess teachers. So it gave them that sense of belief that they knew that they could already show because they were accepted socially and emotionally from their mates. But it all so put them in a non-threatening environment where they knew that they weren't going to get harmed or injured from potentially someone else in a game of AFL football tackling them and dropping them to the ground and breaking their arm or, or hurting their back or hurting their legs. So the e-challenge, the e when we engaged those 32 schools, those 320 kids, we found that the interactive process was so rich that it worked. And it worked so well. Um, we had pools of eight. So in our eight, eight um, pool, I'm sorry, I'll start that one again. In our teams of eight, okay, in our pools of eight, let me go there. In our pools of eight, we played seven games, okay? In the back channel, when you have a look at the tabs coming up later, you'll see where it says pool 
pool rounds. In there, we've got a round robin. So I'm playing Dan Tennessee, and then Dan Tennessee might be playing Kevin Tiller. Kevin Tiller might be then playing Aaron Gardner. Aaron Gardner might then go and play Andy Milne. Andy Milne might then play myself. And so it round, goes around that round robin. Okay, you've got Joe Bailey in there. She might be playing Andy Milne later on. Um, and you've got Candice Young in there, and she might be playing Aaron Gardner later on. So everyone played everyone. There was lots of games all over the place. But our teachers, all they needed to do was do their scores. So the score might have been, uh, for instance, I think the first one was free throw. They had 10 shots. How many they got into the ring um, counted as their score. So whatever they got in, they put into round one, and then their second attempt for each child. So each child in the team gets uh, uh, a go at round one, and then that whole score adds up. And then round two comes along, everyone has a go again. So they all get seven tries, which means it's trial and error, trial and error, trial and error, repetitive, repetitive action, which gives the kids a chance to master what they do. And then what we looked at is we looked at how we were able to master those skills and then build in that confidence and competence factor in a socially envir social environment, but then have that benefit of it playing against each other from throughout the world. In, round, um, in that round, what we found then is there was a need for finals. So we just kept it as it was, and then we put it all on the board and had an overall, okay? But then in, in our January round, we've gone, okay, well, let's have our prelims, our round robins, and then let's go to the finals and create a finals. But we also wanted an interactive feature where we could bring in the vision of people playing and saying hello. So it became a 3D element. So that brought in our idea of having the flip grid and seeing what happened in flip grid. Because if I can see a scoreboard, that's one thing, but if I can see someone else playing, in a different culture, mind you, around the world, also we're, being, we're becoming very culturally diverse and giving our kids exposure to the cultures that are out there that actually make our world our world. Um, so today is the thinking behind all of our build up to the E-Challenge, where it's housed, and then at the end, I'm gonna bring in our celebrities, okay, and we're going to see how this actually unfolds and work out who the ultimate celebrity e-challenge world championship holder is going to be all right team i'm andy here i'm going to show you one more thing and so the the thing with e-challenge is what we're trying to do is not only cater for all children elite but also beginning, what we wanted to do is foster in that growth into physical education. So if I'm looking at, for instance sake, a forehand strike, okay? So I've got a tennis racket here and a tennis ball. I could easily try and hit the ball as far as I possibly could, okay? And that's gonna bring in a layer for uh, strength because I'm trying to hit that ball so far that I'm gonna measure the distance from here to wherever I hit it. Rather than that, we were looking at the elements of object control. So if I brought in E-Challenge, and, and this was E-Challenge, say, for June, it was the amount of ball taps on a tennis racket in, say, one minute, because I know that I could do this until midnight, at which time you'd be watching this show. Um, but I could do this all day long. I could do it with one eye closed. I could do it like Michael Jordan, um, shooting free throws with both eyes closed, okay? Um, so if we bring in then a time constraint and we look at this and go, how many times can we actually bounce a tennis ball on a tennis racket for one minute? And then that actually brought in a competitive element which could be compared against each other. Part of our jobs as teachers is we are data collectors. So uh, if you broke down the e-challenge into a educative model, we are collecting data, data comparisons from around the world. What is the average number of hits of, let's say a 10 year old in one minute of object control onto a tennis racket? So we can measure this quite simply by going, does this child have great object control using the forehand strike motion 
but keeping that tennis ball in control and in the one place. So are my feet moving all around the place to try and chase that ball? No. Do I have great object control of this ball? Yes. Okay. How many times do I bounce the ball? That just becomes a number. It doesn't become a pass or fail because if we look at that, I can sit here and hit it nice and high. Okay. Another student might hit it nice and low. So when we're looking at that data, and I guess I've gone off a little bit of tangent here, we're looking towards how many times they can bounce that ball in a minute, but you're just looking at, it, at that subjectively, okay? At the same time, you can use your e-challenge for assessment and then as a competitive element as well, okay? So if we were looking at that, that would be one challenge. So then I'd bring in someone else who would have their go, okay? And that, and then their go, and then another person's go, and another person's go. So that would end up being round one on our uh, e-challenge leaderboard. Then we'd get to do it again. The best thing about that is I know myself that I'm going to get better because I've already seen it once. So I'm going to come down again, and I'm going to watch someone else do it. And then in round two, I'm going, okay, I'm going to mimic that person because I can do better. I've already got my number. My number might have been 65. So I'm trying to keep it lower, trying to keep my feet steady, my eye on the ball, and I'm going to get 66 because I know that that's my best one. And so on and so on and so on. So that data got collected. All right, so let's have a look at some of the problems and solutions that we developed over this e-challenge. Then let's have a look where I've housed the e-challenge and how you can actually become part of it before we go on to our celebrity challenge. All right, team. Hey, I'm going to check back in with you face-to-face -face right at the end. Okay, but let's have a little look at the data now um, as to what some of the problems were existing and why this e-challenge is so special. So as discussed earlier in our recording, we looked at the problem and solution that exists. And one of the problems initially in the development of this program was simply that sports carnivals have less parents attending due to work needs. The other problem was conversations of students' achievements became recounts only, so they weren't seen in the live. Another one was the decline of the togetherness through primary school age experiences. The other problem we faced was scores are only seen by those on the day because they were written up with whiteboard texters. Some of the solutions then we created around this was creating the platform when non-attendees, so people at schools, offices, overseas even, we're able to see quarter by quarter scores. The conversations with students' achievements became more of a connected through live texts about scores and a more connected outcome to the holistic nature of the day itself. One of the big problems we found, and certainly I found, was that school sport really just uh, catered for the competitive child and that the negative effect on those students that did not like competitive situations uh, were that they might have been judged physically on if they are not as good as the person next to them or not. And that's that self-internalisation, the anxiety, the stress that comes along with sport. And one of the solutions there was to create an alternate program that stood alongside the school sports program but catered for a different range of children that still wanted to compete and they still might have been elite but they wanted to compete in a way that was non-threatening to them um, themselves so they can either com compete socially in a live format or in isolation and this can be played then with teams right around the world so let's have a look how to register for different events so when these events come up what I've done is I've housed them all on my own website. So mrhairphyzed.com. Well, you can see there in the landing page um, of the Global School Sport E-Challenge, we go through what the program is, but then the really important ones are the idea of the rules, the spirit of the game. And there are five, to be respectful, be positive, be considerate, be fun, and be the best version of yourself. And that really harmonized the program to allow children to really harness the fact that they are part of something great. When you scroll down, you'll then see a challenge. So this is our touchdown frisbee challenge. And it comes into the round robin start date. 
it has a round robin finish date. So you know how long you've got to play the games. It's usually about five to six days. The finals start date and then the finals finish date. So they go in a back-to-back -back week um, and then we close the program down. We have the four tabs. So how to play the game is often a video and a little bit of um, text. The sign up, so the sign up is your Google form. So you're signing up specifically for the touchdown Frisbee. The draw card, so on the draw card, it has all the instructions of how to play. And I'll show you that in a minute. And then we had our flip grid, which allowed the children to engage their class through flip grid with other classes around the world. So this was our Google form, standard Google form, put in your details. Now the outcome of this so far, has been so significant because these red little blurbs are where people have played in the e-challenges so far over the past six months from around the world. And it's amazing that how many different cultures we have picked up in the space of only six months and the people that want to play and then the activation of conversation, not only for teacher PD, but then also for student knowledge or an appreciation of, of global students right around the world how people live, how people talk, what people look like, um, how people go to school, and the skill appreciation of each other as well. As we scan across and look at the actual scorecard of the e-challenge, you can see that it's broken into four different parts, and this is the main section that all of our players will look at. The elements here are that we have our location, so where our schools are based, We've got our coach, so that's someone that's taking responsibility for their team and the team name. The team is consistent of four, sorry, 10 children. Um, so they can be of any age. We had grade threes playing year nines, um, for instance. Say. We've then got seven rounds. So each round is scored differently, but it's an amalgamation of all 10 scores. So 10 children, their scores equal that one round. So if you look at the, um, the very top, of the red section there, the group A. You're looking at um, Kelly's team in round one scored 332. Now I believe this was for the 60 second skip. Um, so all of that then pulls in and collects the data. You'll see straight under each pool, there is a table of results. And these are all the results that are pulled together. And I'll show you in a minute where they, the teams play, but it shows how many games you've played, how many wins you've had, how many draws you've had, how many losses you've had, and then it's showing your score for, your score against, and the score difference, and the points, which actually are really cool. I'm going to show you how efficient that ladder is when I do a bit of a live lesson with some gurus coming up. Our hidden pages, and you can, you're can you free to go to these pages anytime you like, but they're all locked down so you can't edit these, and the front page actually pulls all the data from this sheet and they, they send data back and forth to each other. But you can see here how that um, table is working. We've got a group of eight, so um, pool A, and then we've got our game. Game one was Drysdale versus the Tigers. Um, game two was Penn versus the Dragons from up in North Queensland. Um, and these are your head-to-head -head games. So not only are the students recording their challenge scores, but in the round robins, they're playing other schools. So where they might score really well, or really, um, I guess you use the phrase, not well, it, depending on how the other team play, actually creates the result of that round robin. So this is where it's critical that we understand we're going head to head. Um, so in a pool match, having 28-ish games um, in that round robin allow everyone to play everyone. There are a few schools that miss there, but the actual table takes account of that, and um, the, the, it, it still wraps around even if a school hasn't played because there is a result against them to say that that match was played by somebody. So it doesn't penalise the teams that are playing. We then pull everything into the finals, and the finals take the top two from each pool and place them automatically in the red side there, which is, again, the one that our coaches edit and put in their, their rounds again. So they go and play an entire seven rounds again uh, with their teams, and then that falls into our championship ladder. And our champion team is, at this stage, the best overall finals appearance. So the, um, the Cannonvale 
Crocs, which is up in Airlie Beach, um, North Queensland. They were the, the champions of the skip, the 60 second skip. The fourth element along that page was the flip grid and the connections that are made with our students and the real rich connections to be able to see students in different cultures. I remember growing up and seeing students in different cultures really fascinated me. But one of the main things we found playing against um, the United States of America and Australians, we use, we wear school uniforms, okay? In the United States of America, no school uniforms. Um, during summer, we wear wide brim hats, compulsory um, in, in the States. Most of the time, everyone is inside. Uh, we did see... I believe one of our teams was playing in the snow, which was incredible um, in our touchdown frisbee. It was unbelievable. Um, ben A on the, the right-hand side here was playing in the pouring rain um, just before our bushfires hit uh, last year as well. So this makes it come alive. And to be able to use Flipgrid in an environment like this is something so special. So let me introduce you to our contestants today. Um, we pulled these contestants because we knew that they, one, lacked a bit of talent. Um, just kidding, team. Just kidding. Uh, but we knew that they were open to an adventure. Um, we have Andy Milne on the top left. We have Andy Head. Oh, that's me. Uh, middle left. We have Nicholas Klein. Uh, right there in the bottom left, we have Lynn Heffel. In the center, we have Adam Metcalf. Bottom right, we have Steph Sedino. Uh Middle right, and we have the great Azar Gardner, the wizard from three kilometers from where I live. He is in the top right. So they're our contestants today. Now, you can see straight away, they are working on their challenge. So this is called the rolling pin challenge. All they are asked to do is to see how many times they can tap a tennis ball up in the air with a rolling pin. They can go for as long as they like. I think this one, if you're watching Andy Mill at the moment, he goes for 56 taps in a row. Where Aaron Gardner on the top right, I believe he went for about four. Um, their score for their round was on how many taps that they can do in a row. Uh, and then you'll see when we flip to the next video exactly how we pull all that data Together, We also have Brandon Herwick. He has done his challenge as well, um, but I've misplaced the video at the time I had to submit this. So, Brandon, I do apologize. Introduce the e-challenge sheet in a live form. It's broken up like this. So this is our spirit of the game section, and it runs down to scoring, so how the rounds are to be scored, the scorecard, so it's a quick video of how to fill out this scorecard, how to enter your score, the field setup, so that's really important that everyone has those same dimensions, uh, the spirit of the game, so the spirit of game again, looking at did we know and abide by the rules, so this is something that we we're able to assess themselves, um, and it's taken from Ultimate Frisbee. Uh, did we play fairly and submit scores we achieved? Um, were we fair-minded? Did we show self-control and positive attitude? Did we communicate properly and respectfully? So that's for teams to look at and have that spirit of the game um, with themselves. Um, disputes, if there's any errors with programs, um, to email to myself. The code of ethics is when we bring in the be respectful, be positive, be considerate, be fun, and be the best version of yourself. Um, and then looking at the flip grid passwords as well. Um, if we go to the back end of it, and this is where I showed you before. We have the players up the top and who's playing who in each round. So Adam Metcalf and Brandon, um, they're in the first round together. I'm playing Stephanie, which is awesome. So I'm going to show you how all that works. But this information here, that all gets populated from this information here. So if we have a look at this now, and we're going to go down round one. So I'm just going to type these in as we go. And I want you to... Have a look at this section down here. This is the live ladder. So as I type in these scores, this live ladder will start to calculate all of these as we go. So Andy Milne. So 
So that is our round one. So you can see straight away there that all oh, looks surprise, surprise. I'm on top because I scored 25 in round one, whereas Stephanie, she only scored six. So I have a higher goal difference. Um, whereas the opposite side of it, you can see Steph's down the bottom and Aaron Gardner's down the bottom as well. Now, that is our ladder that's set. Watch what happens once I start to enter in the scores straight away for round two. So Andy Milne swapped up. I'm putting in as a Gardner score here who got 26. You have a look where Azza is at the moment. He's third from the bottom and he starts to move straight up to third from the top because he's played two games. Um, we're looking at Steph's score. Poor old Steph. She only scored one. Um, the next one. Into Nick Klein had a great round. And I'll have my best round in that one there. So again, I remain on top because I haven't lost a game yet. But Lynn Heffel is now up, whereas Andy Milne has moved to fifth. Let's have a look how round five happens. And I can tell you that Andy Milne had a blinder, 55. Um, and then myself, oh, so Azar, Steph, Lynn, four, 17, six, and myself, a big score of nine. Um, so if we've then flipped over to here to group A, you can see where uh, that score there, I was playing Nick Klein. So Nick only scored six and I scored nine. Even though I had a very small score, Nick had a smaller score. And Andy Milne, he scored 55. So he, his goal four went straight up to a higher level. Then if we look at the round four, and we'll just punch in all of these so you can sort of see what, what happens. We'll, we might finish on this one. So you can see what has sort of happens after round four. And 12. And again, we've got our wins right down to Adam Metcalf, who hasn't had a win yet. Sorry, Adam. Uh, but at least Steph got a win, and away we go. So that is how we manage to score our program. Lo and behold, look who the champ is. I'm telling you, I didn't cheat. And if you think I did, let's meet at the next Shape America conference and we'll have a rolling pin tennis ball bounce off championship. Um, but you can see straight away down there, we've all played seven. I've had seven wins. Um, Adam Metcalf had one win. Um, Steph had one win, but the goal difference was very similar. Adam just had a little bit less. You can see that Andy Milne had the highest goals for but he also had a high goal against as well, which gave him 64, uh, 15, and then Brandon picking up uh, third place there as well. So normally what we would have here is we would have all of these areas populated, and then we'd be able to go into the finals score input. So you can see straight away here, oops, I better delete those, those from a, a past one, that Andy Milne and Andy Hare have qualified for the finals, and once we get moving and we get ourselves playing, the championship ladder will then populate itself as well to a gold, a silver, and a bronze position. So that, in a nutshell, is how we actually use the e-challenge template to build a, uh, a live score sheet that we can use right around the world. If we have a look at one of my final slides here, and it's the stats, the data I've collected on the e-challenge. So, so far over the course of the trialing, the teachers I've trialed this with, the students I've trialed this with, we've actually engaged 6,000 people just to trial this, and this is across the last 12 months. But the longevity of this, I'm looking to embed it so people can take control of their own challenges in their own districts, in their own schools, and having upwards of 200,000 people a year playing in this non-threatening level of challenge-based sport. Um, the life scoring sheets, and this is this is so cool, but the life scoring sheets since 2013 when I started to develop my first ones have had upwards of 40,000 spectator engagements 
and this is measured through feedback and comments um, via the school sport surveys. Um, and school sport is the governing body of our sport here in Victoria. So that's it team, that's e-challenge in an absolute nutshell. If you have any questions at all about what we've discussed today, please do so on the contacts right here. If you haven't followed me on Twitter, please hit me up on Twitter there as well. There's so many great things. Um, have a look at my website. There is uh, an enormous amount of resources there as well. We're here to support you through everything. Give each challenge a go when you get back to school. Even if you're doing remote learning right now, it's a great thing to be able to engage with your kids. All right, team, from me to you, I love you, and I'll see you sometime soon.